This is Pastor Nick Hood, and I want to share with you uh, something that I text to my church members today. Uh, and you may not be aware of this, but I have a text ministry. And in the text ministry, uh, I send this out to about 550 <coughs> members of the church, as well as uh, about 100 people who are not members of the church all around the country. And I send out either a Bible verse or prayer. But the one today is, uh, you know, my, my wife had a discussion with women last night, and I, you know, I was kind of eavesdropping, and they were, you know, interviewing one of the members of the church, uh, Judge Deborah Geraldine Bledsoe Ford, about her artistry. And it was a surprise to me to learn that Judge Ford has an artistic streak in her. But, you know, you never know about people until you ask people, what do they really do? And uh, so anyway, when it was over, Denise was asking me about creativity and uh, why is it some people seem to be more creative than others? And I gave her my short answer. I said, Denise, you know, I really believe that God has one spirit, but that spirit manifests itself in many ways. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, Paul says there are, uh, varieties of gifts but one spirit and he talks about how some are gifted as teachers preachers healers and so forth uh, and then he at the end he says but the greatest gift is love uh, and I'll talk about that maybe another day but the little word I want to say about creativity is this I believe that each of us is blessed with the potential to be creative but I also believe that the reason why many are not creative is because we're not courageous. If you're gonna be creative, you have to be courageous. And, uh, and that's true for the artist, it's true for the politician, it's true for the business person. When you talk to a business person about making an investment, uh, and very often uh, investments are not made because a person just doesn't wanna risk their money. I talked to one of the young women in my church, only, I think she's 27 years of age. Uh, I talked to her because her father and mother asked me to call her. And I said, well, let me call her. And I called her and I started off by saying, I heard that you have a new business and that your business is doing well. It's an online business. And she said, Reverend Hood, that's true. And uh, I commended her about it. I asked her, how did she get into it? She said, well, you know, my work wasn't going that well, uh, you know, in the hospital industry. And uh, I started thinking about it. And I said, you know, a lot of the people who work in health-related fields wear scrubs or they wear these uh, medical outfits. So she said she started an apparel business and it's going gangbusters right now. Now, I'm just, and I commended her on that, and all I could think of was I said, you know, uh, I think of all the people who don't make an investment because they're terrified. Uh, and, you know, I was talking to my wife about that in the context of creativity, and what I told Denise was, I said, you know, and I, some of you may not know this, but I have a musical background, uh, and it's just the grace of God, I'm not, playing for a living right now. Uh, but I have nothing against people playing for a living. living. But what I want to say about creativity uh, and the spirit is this. Just because a person can play an instrument doesn't mean they're creative. Now think about what I just said. Let me say it again. Just because you can play an instrument or sing a tune does not necessarily mean you're creative. It means you can play. It means you can sing. Uh, but you know, the ability to improvise, the, in, in, the ability to create your own songs uh, only can come uh, when you have the courage to step out in faith. And, uh, you know, it, it's not enough just to play, you know, in the black tradition, we play jazz and we improvise. Uh, but it's not enough uh, just to, you know, when it's time to improvise, to change the key. That's, that's not real creativity. Uh, it's not enough uh, to go to another octave. But when you're able to really uh, 
take that music, to transpose the music, to invert the music, convert the music. That's when the real creativity happens. But people don't want you to step outside of your lane. Uh, I also have a political background. And when I first ran for office, I asked an important person to support me. And this person looked at me and said, Nick, you're too fat. And I had never been called fat. Now, I, you know, I only weighed 185 pounds. I'm down to about 185 pounds now <laughs> uh, because I stopped eating McDonald's. But I think about that sometimes, that a man actually told me I was too fat at 185 pounds. Mike, are you 185 pounds? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to ask Mike Daniels how much he weighs, but, but all I could think of was, you know, I said, that guy told me uh, he was throwing water on my hopes because he said, you're 185 pounds. And then the funny thing, life is funny. The guy that told me I was 185 pounds, is about 250 pounds now, you know, and he's lived long enough to see that. And so, I, you know, I'm, I'm not gloating, but the point that I'm making is there's always somebody somewhere who wants to throw water on your dream. And that's one of the biggest inhibitors to being creative is the fear that somebody's going to throw water on your dreams. So my friends, that's the word I'm leaving you with today. If you'd like to receive my text message, text me. 313-999-4492. And I'll send you a text almost every day. I try to do it every day, either a prayer or a Bible verse. And the Bible verses are verses of encouragement. And I'm leaving you with this encouragement. I am praying for you. God.